My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is uh, September 30th, 2022. We're almost to the spooky months, which means spooky games, which means spooky movies. I made a deal with Declan. I told Declan, I said, I said, uh, time is 3 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. See, co-host, co-host joining me. Thank you so much, everybody. Joining me today for the news. I made a deal with Declan this weekend. <clears throat> I said, I said, Declan, we gotta watch, we gotta watch like a, a, a Halloween movie that you've never seen. And he's like, no, 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 watch. I wanna watch Destroy All Monsters. And I was like, what the fuck? What? I said, what year? What year is Destroy All Monsters? It's 1968. I was like, what? And he's just like, no, but I wanna watch it. I'm like, okay, well, let's watch my movie first and then watch your movie. And he's like, which movie is it? And I'm like, Ernest Scared Stupid. And he's like, okay, because he has no idea. He doesn't know what it means. He just, to him, I just said some words. He doesn't know who Ernest is. He doesn't know any of that shit. So I was like, that's the one we're going to watch. Hell yeah, that's right. This my, He's going to know what Miak is. All right? Only only people who watch, only people who know, know what Miak is. <laughs> the masterpiece. The masterpiece. He going to learn today. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, yeah, Miak. I still call milk Miak. And it's funny because I would just, I'll just say it just for fun to myself, right? Or out loud, of course. And Jen caught, Jen was like, why are you, what the fuck? Like, I'm like, Miak, right? I'll pull it out. And she's like, what do you call it? And I told her, I was like, oh my God. Okay, so there's this movie. <laughs> if you know, you know. Hey, thank you, Tanners, for testing that out. We're on the news right now. Hold on. We're going to talk about this stuff. Right now, you can even see it. You can't even see it here. You can't even see it. Oh, man. All right. All right. <clears throat> so first off, first off, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, we're going to talk. We're going to do some catching up to last week's news. Last week's news, we talked about, uh, was it last week or before? Uh, we talked about um, uh, uh, the GTA 6 leaks that happened. Uh, the person who, uh, who, uh, who, who, who did the leak had the name like Uber Hacker or something. So... There was, there was this like, you know, possible connections, but we don't know. They could be taking credit for it or whatever, but that's right. He got, got, they caught him. It says teen arrested over rockstar intrusion had prior hacking charges. He's 17 years old, 17 years old, busted, uh, British teenager. So I don't know what the, I don't know what the, uh, uh, the, like how strict the laws are in the UK. Like he's 17 years old, right? So like in the States, he'd be underage, not an adult. But there's so many crimes in the States that they're like, mm, we'll try him as an adult, right? Like just, So I don't know how that works in the UK. Or if they're just going to be like, yeah, I mean, takes like, he's going to be wearing a lot of lipstick in prison. Or is he? Or is he? I mean, like, you know, he'd leave some video game stuff, you know, and the Uber stuff. But uh, but still, I don't know what, what, the, what the lasting... Uh, charges will be. I'll tell you, I did some dumb shit when I was 16 years old uh, and 17 years old. Uh, stuff that I should have definitely gotten charged for <laughs> if I had gotten caught. Um, so, so for me, it's like ah, 17. Like he has prior hacking charges, but he's 17 years old, man. But it says here, it says AK, which is the acronym they're giving him because he's underage. Uh, I also believe to be the mastermind behind an attack that targeted Uber Technologies, in which he allegedly obtained a contractor's username and password to gain access to some services that ride sharing company used. A police source with knowledge of the matter said. And so, <clears throat> and then over here, and see. Da -da 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 -da, it says prosecutors now have charged AK with two counts of violating his bail uh, and two counts of violating Britain's computer misuse law. Uh, he was arraigned in court on Saturday and is expected to remain in custody. Um, this is change, change some grades. Hell yeah. <laughs> but never to this aspect. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, apparently he was also on bail too. I forgot to mention that. But uh, so, or uh, uh, he had, he's on a parole or whatever. Based, it's not, he's not a first time offender, essentially. Not a first time offender. Probably just, you know, just bored on the computer, just hacking away, I guess. Uh, also, also as a follow up to last week, uh, we talked about, God, that was last week, right? <laughs> I have no sense of time. Uh, <clears throat> we talked a little bit about G2. 
And G2, uh, G2 is esports entity, fairly large esports entity. Uh, they made a statement uh, following uh, following the controversy that happened. Just a reminder, what it is. Um, so the CEO of of G2 uh, named Carlos, he was seen hanging out with Andrew Tate. Um, Andrew Tate is a known and and celebrated and lauded and hated and whatever uh, uh, misogynist. He talks about women being in the kitchen, all that shit, like real caveman type shit, right? Um, and but he's got immense popularity immense popularity and so he appeared in a video drinking with like at a party with uh uh with carlos uh obviously people saw that and they're like hold the hold the fuck on because g2 esports at the same time simultaneous to all this other stuff that was happening with andrew tate was also promoting like an all women's league that was happening on their main twitter and so it's like it kind of got these like, conflicting actions that are happening um so you know he he came out and he made a statement uh initially saying fuck y'all i'm gonna have friends you're not gonna tell me what i could do i'm a fucking badass look at me mm, right uh and then uh he was put on temporary leave and now he has been removed as the ceo of uh, of G2 Esports. So this here, it's been a tough week for all of us following the events of last weekend. Today we received and accepted Carlos's announcement to step down as CEO of G2 Esports as a global esports organization serving the world's most diverse fan base. Take responsibility for our fans, please. Da, 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 da. Do not support any form of misogyny. We continue to prioritize fostering inclusivity and supporting a diverse gaming community. So it's not so much about having the friend, having Andrew Tate as a friend. Uh, it's also, I mean, in my opinion, it's also about how he tr how he acted after the fact. Uh, we also went through his likes and we saw that he was liking things on Twitter that were uh, uh, that were not reflecting the official statement that he made uh, saying that, oh, this is unbecoming of a CEO, whatever, whatever. Uh, turns out we can't tell him who he can't friend. Yeah, well, you know, he's probably going to wait this one out. He put out a video. Uh, we'll play like a second of it here. Nope. You know, I thought about no better way to do this than with the vertical video, which I know I, I got a lot of flack for it in the past, in previous times, but this is no better way to do this than this. So I can't believe what I'm about to say now, but um, my time in G2 has- All right, came to an end. Uh, <laughs> we don't got time for all this stuff. Uh, I, you know, there is nothing nothing that was said that, um, that was necessarily interesting to like the story. Uh, to the case um, in terms of like, you know, why he left, who pressured him, all that stuff. Um, there, There's plenty of denials going around that had anything to do with riots. Um, and here's a couple of statements here. It says, hey, everyone, I saw several false rumors regarding G2 and Carlos. I want to clarify the LEC has not requested that Carlos uh, Carlos uh, to resign from G2 nor divest his ownership. We opened an investigation last week. Da -da -da -da. Um, so basic people coming out and saying, no, Riot had nothing to do with this or whatever. Which they may not have, but they did lose their, I think their Valorant contract for the next season or something. Basically, they lost a fuck ton of money in contracts uh, through like Valorant, I think is what it was. Um, so so m while they may not have necessarily explicitly said that, yo, no, you 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 have to step down. I feel like their actions spoke a little bit louder than, than words. But they're saying here, that uh, was an elected, elected request. Riot did. And he's saying, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I did come across this video that just to like further kind of like kind of paint a picture of like who this guy is and his personality. It's total like edge lord, like, you know, oh God, these you, you come across these like CEOs that fucking tons of money and they have this really weird like. Um, What's the name of the, the 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 three the three commas guy from uh, from from Silicon Valley? Russ Hanneman. It, they have this like Russ Hanneman, the character in in uh, 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 um, Silicon Valley is like really close to how they actually act, you know. And they don't even need to get to like the triple commas like tier. Edge Lords, those are always needing to take it down to to. Uh, Need to be anime. Yeah, and they're, they're here we like go. Listen, first place team. this is uh, this is so this is Carlos in the corner here. This is double lift. Uh, I mean, most of these guys are known in the uh, in the esports community. Um, but yeah, it's just weird. Just weird, man. Joe, like Joe, you know, if I were you, actually, oh my god, I would love to be in this position. Oh my god, please, one day, G two fans, demand that I that I leave my role as the CEO. It's gonna be I'm gonna do the biggest middle finger content piece that I've ever done. Like I would not give a single isolated fuck 
Joe, you have to write this, okay? You have to take a track yourself. Take a track to the streets. Find the biggest track. You know these buses that have like two, two portions? Just make a bus with like five portions in them. And just a big honking, you know, around South Korea. Just telling every T1 Korean fan, fuck off, fuck off. Just middle finger in everybody. That is how you do it. Everyone's like... <laughs> <laughs> just run a big bus and just say fuck off going through south korea just fuck off yeah very ceo like i mean like i said it, it's it's if you watch silicon valley you know this person you know this person <laughs> so <clears throat> so yeah that's that's the end of that so he stepped away well he's he's now stepping down as ceo who find something else to do uh he's like currently active on twitter just posting other random shit you know nothing necessarily related to the controversy uh, he's also not liking too many things that are related to the controversy. I think he got wise that people were looking through his likes like we were. Uh, <laughs> you made it for part of the news. Yeah, Crispy, we just started. So you're good. We're just doing catch ups on uh, on previous, previous, previous episode. Uh, we also have another. We have another update. This one is from uh, the uh, the anal beads uh, cheating chest cheating thing. Which I just love putting all that together because it's just such a weird combination of words, right? Uh, <clears throat> so, just a little bit of a primer in case you missed it last week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, um, so uh, Magnus Carlsen, world-renowned chess master, grandmaster, uh, and he... he uh, Stepped away from a or like resigned from a chess match against uh, Hans Niemann, uh, who is a newer chess champion. And uh, there were these really we 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 surfaced all of like the source of this weird rumor that started circulating that Hans Niemann was using remote activated anal beads in order to tell him where to move on the board. Um, and it was just, it all was fabricated from this insane Reddit story that said that it was, it was Magnus's idea to use the beads and Han stole the beads and Marcus or Magnus knows that that's what he's doing because it was his idea. It was so fucking weird. So fucking weird. So this poor guy, Hans, and we watched some of the clips uh, on news. The poor, this poor guy had to come out and defend himself in interviews. And he's just like, he's like, I don't cheat. I, have, I don't cheat on over the board or whatever. He said, he said that when he was like 14 or something or 13, he, had, he was or 12. Uh, he cheated like online games. He would cheat. Um, but I mean, you're 12. <laughs> like, who cares? Uh, let's say it was true. How would he cheat? Is binary? Does he get Morse code moves? Yeah, 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 exactly. I, I don't know how that would work. I don't know how it would even work. Um, I don't want to sound dumb, but how is it possible? How do they work this out? Yeah, I know, yeah, exactly. No one knows how, right? But Magnus never acknowledged that that was the thing because it was totally made up. But somehow, because this story, this fake story came out around the same time that this whole like hype machine was like fucking starting to get going, that became the truth. <laughs> and while Mark Magnus is still standing behind saying st standing standing behind fucking anal beating man uh, while he's still st standing besides his action on oh, fucking standing while he still does not regret resigning from his <laughs> from the match against Hans. Uh, uh, he has come out with a statement following up and, and kind of just kind of detailing a few more things. So it says, uh, <clears throat> he says at the cup, I made unprecedented for statistics withdrawal. He said, basically he said he withdrew from the uh, tournament. Uh, and he says, I believe that cheating in chess is a big deal and an existential threat to the game. Um, oops, lost my spot here. Da, 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 da. Uh, I also believe that chess organizers and all those who care about the sanctity of the game we, uh, we love should seriously consider increasing security measures and methods of cheat detection for over-the-board chess. Uh, when Neiman was invited last minute to the 2022 Sinkfield, Sinkfield Cup, I strongly considered withdrawing prior to the event. I ultimately chose to play. And so he says, I believe that Neiman has cheated more and more recently than he has publicly admitted. His over the board progress has been unusual. And throughout our game in Sinkfield Cup, uh, I had the impression that he wasn't tense or even fully concentrating on the game in critical positions while outplaying me as black in a way that I think only a handful of players can do. This game contributed to changing my perspective. So he's saying basically what he's saying is that because he lost to this person, they must be cheating. <laughs> Which is a weird trend that we seem to be getting ourselves into lately. 
uh, when they always say, when do the animals will undergo a uh, rectal exam for offense? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should go back to the accuser. He who smelt it, dealt it. Well, it was his beads, apparently. It was his system. <laughs> So, so he's saying yeah, he beat me exactly. So that's what that's and that's kind of what I speculated last time. It's like man, because we watched the interview with Hans, right? And he seemed genuinely just like, dude, I'm not fucking cheating. Like, yes, I was. I cheated when I was a kid. Yes, he was trying to show, like, yeah, I I have done it before. I was a kid, 12, 13, whatever. He's like, I'm not fucking doing it now. And and I, I he went as far as you know I'm not saying I, I really wanted him to come out to say no bitch I'm not using fucking anal beads check my asshole but he's not uh, so this is gonna be a weird one for them to have to uh, you know um, I guess figure out like how he's cheating or whatever if that's the case but they are going to investigate so the FIDE which is basically the International Chess Federation um, they are going to be open. They have a separate uh, division that handles uh, fair play. It's called the Fair Play Commission. So they're going to go and they're going to do an inspection. I don't know how. I don't know how. <laughs> but they're going to go through and do an investigation. It's just, it's, inspection may have been the wrong word. Uh, but they're going to do an investigation. Uh, investigate the hole. <laughs> this story is too much. Inspect what? I don't know. <laughs> So it says, uh, it says that they told the site, they told, they told Chess24, uh, it says, are there enough facts to justify an allegation of cheating? If we conclude that this is the case, we would bring appropriate charges with FIDE Ethics and Disciplinary Committee. However, we would also investigate whether false accusation has been made. So this is, this could potentially backfire on, on Marcus. I mean, if Marcus is just butthurt that he lost... Like this could be very damning to his uh, performance, career, career performance. So, <clears throat> I mean, you know, uh, uh, Hans is new to the scene, and to just like shush somebody out of the scene by helping perpetuate rumors that he's sticking things in his ass to tell him to go to night to fucking R four or whatever the fuck. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but hurt. Oh, did I? <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> uh, also, also to follow up on last week, um, let me see. I can pull us up another window here because Bloomberg. So last week we talked about um, uh, Dan uh, Dan Clancy. We had a rev share announcement that was made for Twitch. This is a very bright screen coming up. I'll try to keep it in the PIP. Uh, so Dan Clancy, uh, who is the CEO, the uncelebrated new CEO. I don't know when he started or anything, um, but we know that Emmett Shear is not doing anything for the company anymore. So somebody had to come in and do something. Uh, so uh, uh, Dan Clancy came out and announced that anybody making over $100,000 on the platform is going to be getting a cut of 50-50, but you get 70-30 up until you get to that point. It's, there's a lot of other nuance and like complications in there and everything and obviously a lot of people are upset because it feels like well wait a minute twitch don't you have like a parent company that's literally the biggest company in the world besides apple uh <laughs> right yeah uh, like yeah so people are people are you know they're understandably like a little confused by this mixed messages it's like well hold on you are part of amazon now you should be getting the better deal um but it seems like Dan Clancy's been put in to look out for the finances of Twitch and get it back into uh, uh, basically into making money or get it to the point where it's making some money. And so we're seeing a lot of changes come down that um, a lot of features and everything that support that uh, support them trying to make more money, whether it's a less a cut, lesser cut or super chats and all that, which I think we will talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but <clears throat> This is, I mean, this, this is, uh, I mean, a statement I have here, it says, um, uh, this is from Twitch's former director. Oh, so by the way, so yeah, sorry. So the, the reason why we're talking about the story is because the, uh, what was, what was, she's the, uh, content chief. She has another position, but basically she was listed as like content chief, which is essentially somebody in the, uh, in the senior management that, uh, is there essentially to advocate for, for creators, uh, has left and she left basically the same day that all this was announced or the same within the same couple days or something um, Feels like I got back from lunch for some super super janky news. Wait, you call my news janky dang um, So it says here this is a quote this is a quote from Zachary Diaz who is Twitch's former director of emerging content um, and and now he's spent now he's working on TikTok. but it says Dan is the ultimate embodiment of a tenured business technology professional coming from a non-creator first company trying to right side a ship that seemed to be veering off into unprofitability 
Uh, he is the embodiment of creator sentiment is secondary to anything. There's no leader to push back against that. It's now the direction of Twitch. So, I mean, I you know it's, it sounds very like doom, like doomsday, right? But I mean, if there's nobody there to advocate for us, I guess not even the the the, the team that they put together the team of like random streamers they put together that was supposed to represent us i don't even know if that's a thing anymore thank god we chased them out because now we literally have nobody to stand up for us wheat doesn't work there anymore like what the fuck who's left <laughs> uh zach he left tiktok yeah and it says that he spent eight months as tiktok's head at us uh for creator management for his life platform so so he did work at tiktok in a related field um that's the one with uh, Ko. He said he was going to do some, do uh, nothing with it yeah basically is basically what happened to uh, stadia devs well, this is not, not not this this is not quite not quite, but um, uh, see, as cuts in the fires typically in court behavior. Yeah, Daddy Bez does not give AWS space for free. Yeah, so that was the other thing too. Like when we look at the initial, uh, we think we talked about it last night. So I don't want to harp on it, but when Dan Clancy put out that initial uh, uh, write up showing that you know Twitch is expensive and we need to make changes in, around here if we want to keep the bills paid, keep the lights on. Um, it did seem weird that they're quoting us the published prices for AWS or for the server uses that they're the, the servers that they're using, uh, and that was just weird because it's like, well, I mean, if you guys are the same company, shouldn't you guys be getting like a discount or something like that? Like there should be some kind of like any any expense that you incur as a business whether it's part of whether it's internal or whatever still goes towards your bottom line you know it still goes on the pnl or whatever uh they still have it still is a cost of operation so they still count it but you're not necessarily trying to turn a profit on your internal like businesses and that's the part that seems to be the like that's that's that seems to be not happening there. Um, <clears throat> should be service at cost plus 5%. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Something like that. Uh, we're a small indie company. Our servers are expensive. Why doesn't Amazon accept exposure as payment? Jeez, I know, man. We're, we could make them popular, man. We could help them out. No, actually, I saw this one. I saw this one comment and I was just like, damn, that sounds like pretty plausible uh, that they were trying to uh, uh, doing their best to basically sync the Twitch brand so they could rebrand it as as Amazon Live or something like that. Right. And I was like, Oof. oh, wait, that was uh, wait, who was that Sh shrimp? I think it was, was that shrimp that said that on Twitter. Um, but yeah, Amazon Prime Prime TV. No, they already have that. And so we DJ Wheat ex employee of uh, of Twitch, um, one of the OGs, one of the OGs of Twitch actually. Uh, uh, he left a while ago, but he he even came out and said, "Imagine spending four years of your life telling people uh, that leadership was growing more out of touch with creators every day, and then having them give you the impression that we were wrong and disruptive. My job was never to make money; it was to put creators first. Sag. So this further supports further supports the." Um, uh, the comment made by Zachary Diaz about how, you know, there's just not anybody that's going to be able to advocate for creators uh, outside of, you know, whatever data shows up, <laughs> whatever data shows up that that happens to also coincide with creators needs or how much they lose on Twitch Prime. And if that's uh, if that's on the cut list, I mean, if they cut Twitch Prime, that's going to turn. I mean, already, already Twitch has a really bad, has a really bad problem with the communication. A really, really bad problem with communication. People feel like people like creators and now viewers uh, are feeling like they're kind of just being left out. You know, like I feel like overall with all these changes, and everything coming down, like it's getting very expensive to just watch Twitch. <laughs> but to like uh, if they cut Twitch Prime, that's it. Yeah, I feel like if they cut Twitch Prime, that's the end, because what's going to happen is that is that YouTube's just going to play. Well, hey, you know what? YouTube Red also includes a free sub. And then that's the end of Twitch. <laughs> they can't let that go because if they let that go that's seriously going to be the end so to talk a little bit more about there i actually have this article lined up here so, so speaking of not being able to communicate very well this happened uh the other day uh it says sing an error when logging in be sure you're using a supported web browser chrome firefox or edge and your browser is fully updated we have an art help article to help troubleshoot this coming soon so this was Twitch support's message. We saw uh, from uh, from Bussy, Zach Bussy. Uh, Zach Bussy says, Twitch has dropped support for several very common browsers. They only support Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. It was like uh, Opera um, and a, a whole bunch of others that were not, not necessarily the most popular, but, um, but they were still browsers that were just flat out not supported. Uh, and we didn't get any communications on this. So this 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 post by Zach was just a couple hours after the original post. He's actually tweeting it here. Or he's retweeting it here. Um, 
And so then we get, and then I found this other tweet, and this is from Tom, and Tom works at, uh, uh, Tom Verrilli, thank you, uh, Chief Product Officer at Twitch. And he comes out and he says, there's a lot of what the fuck replies, and it's about ad block and subtweets, so let me help explain what's going on here. Uh, it says, there are organized groups trying to create botnets, bots that end up being used for hate raids, and there is one such mob very active recently. Uh, and I saw this tweet too from Commander Root. Commander Root's another one of those like kind of Twitch meta uh, accounts that would you could follow if you wanted some good inside information to like what's happening at Twitch. Um, and so I did see this uh, pop up, and I didn't think it was any, that big of a deal. But they found an easy way to create lots of Twitch accounts, and it was had to do something with the browser maybe. So, so when that happens, uh, we close whatever hole they found, clear the bot accounts, all that stuff. And so what they were saying is that the the exploit was really only happening on certain browsers. And so it's just like, why not lead with that? Why not lead with that? <laughs> like, like, like if that's what it is, then fucking say that part first. <laughs> fucking for reals. Uh, and so it was finally later clarified by Twitch, and they had a multi a multi uh, uh, tweet thread here, basically we apologize for login issues, and then more context to why. And so that then they go through and basically say everything that uh, that Tom said. So, like, this is a great example, a great example of how Twitch just fucking sucks at communication, uh, especially as of late. While they're putting out tons of tweets and everything, right? They're putting out tweets. Oh, look at this new feature and all that stuff. It's like they're not they're not like answering anybody's actual questions. It's just a very one way street. And <laughs> and it's very dismissive, too. And they're like, oh, use one of our supporter browsers. It's like, why don't you tell us you're working on something for fuck's sake? Or just don't say anything at all. I don't know. Shit. Context and intent matters. Yeah, uh, it's about hey, it's not the ads. Definitely not the ads, which they been pushing so hard. Yeah, imagine big tech companies were good at communication. Jeez. I mean, like I, at least some some try. You know, like Instagram. Whenever you get an update from Instagram, there's always that Instagram story that pops up in the corner, and uh, and you click on it, and it gives you a cool little video about the updates that are happening. And Discord actually does the same thing. They always make a cute little update kind of thing, right? But I don't feel like we see any of that shit on Twitch unless you follow like a hundred fucking employees. Then one of them might say, oh, yeah, we launched this thing, which is pretty great, you know, or or we found a problem with bot, you know, bots being made easy peasy on these other browsers. So we locked the people out of it, you know. So, yeah, just Twitch is just sucking <laughs> with communication. Uh, it's a who is as far as core WebKit uh, in Chrome. Um so Safari's core is WebKit. Every every browser on iOS is also has a core of WebKit. It has something to do with like security standards on on iOS. Um, I don't know what the status of those browsers were during this period. I didn't make an attempt to log in through the browser. I never log in through the browser anyways on, on mobile. Uh, I didn't have any other browsers installed. Uh, what I heard was this, was this was resolved relatively quickly. So you should be able to go on if you have Opera DX or something. Uh, you should be able to open that up and log in and not have any issues. So this was something that was resolved. Off. But again, it comes down to communication. <laughs> Please talk to us. And, you know, it, it gets worse, too. Like, at least when we had like we and a bunch of other people that work in there, they're very communicative. They had like these regular shows that they would do or streams. This was happening. Uh, and I don't know if that's still happening on Twitch. Like we have these like kind of update streams or whatever. And I get it that they don't want to come out and do that often. Because there's a fucking ton of people that is going there, just bitch about everything. Look at the comments and e any any Twitch thread, and you'll always see like random, random, like real fringe issues. Like you know, I submitted my you know uh, partner app or something or, or affiliate app, whatever. I don't know. There's always something like random one thing. Oh, this person said that they were unfollowed, you know, and I didn't unfollow them. I don't know. Like, that's not a really big problem, dude. Just follow them again. You'll be fine. Uh, Safari and Chrome's WebKit are not the same WebKit. On, are you talking about on iOS? Is that not the case? Well, I don't, we, we could talk about it more later, but I, that's why that's what I read was that on iOS, all browsers basically use the same base. Um, and I, I may not be, I may not be uh, 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 knowledgeable on like what that necessarily means, right? But iOS is all Safari. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. See, I'm smart. <laughs> on PC, they're different. Oh yeah, yeah, of course on PC, they're different for sure. Um, uh, it doesn't feel like spin down slash ignore mode from Twitch management. It does. Yeah. And you know, that's, I mean, that's a fair way of putting it. It does feel like, Hey, you know, we gotta, we gotta write this ship. Uh, so let's just not really focus on, 
on whatever kind of maybe cool features or something like that that uh, maybe we're looking for um, to help grow the, the the platform. It already has a plenty of features, man. I, I, really, it's just about discoverability and shit. Um, Twitch following Blizzard's lead used to do shows and upcoming events packages to have ghosted their community. That's what it feels like. Yeah, it feels like the ghosted community. There's all kinds of cool things that are coming out. With that, they're like, oh yeah, you could now, you know, use super chats. We were talking about this before the stream, actually, for the news. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, super chats is, is a thing now. Uh, what do they call it? I think we're calling it like Giga Chats or something. Um, but but this is this is very similar to YouTube's super chat system. Elevated. Oh my god. Okay, elevated. The fuck? That's not catchy. Elevated chats. I saw you know I saw that in the URL. That that's not what it's called. That's a stupid name. Yeah, Giga Chat. All right, so Giga Chats, we're calling it from now on. Uh, yeah, 2.5 minutes for 100 bucks. Elevate at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tia. Yes, exactly. I pay money to be elevated among everyone else. Looks like real life. <laughs> You're still, yeah, so some people are not eligible to actually uh, uh, to, to throw money at, at people using this system. Uh, and that could be for any any number of reasons. It's still rolling out, or there's some limitations based on your country and how you're allowed to spend money online or something. I have no idea. Uh, <clears throat> but this is what it looks like right now. $5 for 30 seconds, $10, 1 minute, 25, 1 1.5, 52, and then 100 for 2.5. So you can pay 100 bucks to have a message pop up for 2.5 minutes, which, by the way, is not visible yet through OBS. Uh, it's not visible yet through the dashboard other than the, uh, the activity feed. Um, there's no sounds or anything, alerts or anything uh, for it yet. I'm sure all these things will happen with time. All these things will come with time. Um, but yeah, so they can pay 100 bucks to put the message up for 2.5 hours, or they can pay $5 five times and have the message up for the same amount of time. Now, I don't know if there's a limit to people spamming the same message over and over again or the same person donating over and over again, but still... As, as as it was put earlier in chat, those are some pretty crazy diminishing returns. <laughs> it just costs, just keeps going up. Three minutes, $500. Uh, I, I know it's not visible if you're full screen too. Yeah, it's not visible if you're full screen. Yeah, it's, it's, there's gonna be something, there's gotta be some kind of overlay something to come out um, with like Streamlabs. Streamlabs will put in some kind, or Streamlabs or any other like overlay service will come out with something that to represent that in the feed it's, or in the uh, overlay. Um, but the actual chat itself, like Twitch chat, excuse me, uh, does not show it on our dashboard yet or in the uh, chat sidebar that you could put up in, uh, in OBS. It feels bad, yeah, exactly. That's the point I'm trying to make here. It's like, it does feel like they got it working but it's not necessarily fully fleshed out yet. Now, some of that is obviously up to third parties to flesh out. But like I said, it's not even in the core chat chat feed. Like a like a sub, a sub will show up in the core chat feed, right? It'll show up right here. It'll be like some so, so, right? And you're like, yeah, you're buddy, but yeah. <laughs> but the super chats will show up anywhere, or the giga chats, whatever. Um, <laughs> we have to go back here and say, what if? And hear me out here. I just have a message in chat and donate to the stream PayPal instead. Hey. Hey, all right, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. You should do that. Uh, I feel like I need to add an addendum uh, bar to my chat box that pops out for these kinds of messages. What is the streamers cut of that money? So oh, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. The, the split is 70 30. Sound familiar? That's right, because that used to be the cut for anybody making over $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 70 30. Uh, but it's not really 70 30 because the fees and all that stuff come out uh, before, right? Like before. So, like, if somebody were to give 100 bucks, um, uh, somebody give a hundred bucks, then I would take home like $67 or something like that because there's like fees and all that stuff that come out first and then they do the split. Uh, uh, YouTube actually absorbs that split with super chats. Whenever uh, it's a, it's the same split, by the way, 70, 30. Um, uh, so whenever, uh, somebody makes, you know, a payment of a hundred bucks or whatever, then they actually get the full 70% because they're taking out the, uh, they're doing the split before the, the taxes and fees and YouTube is just basically absorbing those fees. So already, so they launched the service and already it's a little bit better than, sorry, it's not as good as, uh, uh, as YouTube. Mm. Hey, that still works, but still works. Thank you. Oh, well, the alert's turned off, but thank you. <laughs> so you saying that YouTube does it better? I mean, so far YouTube does it better. And you know, to quote, to quote, uh, to quote the, um, the imitable uh, Jesse Cox says that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. It's just the, what is it? It was just the, the corpses of all of us who, uh, uh, who survived the apocalypse. And that's true. It's very true. 
Like, while it does look like Twitch is hurting right now, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that YouTube is going to be better. Uh, TikTok is going to be better. Let's see. <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be better. All right. So <laughs> we had Mixer Mike and we split. Uh, that's right. You could have had Mixer Mike. Dang. <laughs> so, uh, 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 there was another announcement here. This doesn't necessarily impact anybody here, but if you live in South Korea, uh, that's weird. i uh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, if you live in South Korea, you are, and you're trying to watch, uh, if you're trying to watch Twitch, you are now only watching it at 720p. That is the maximum resolution supported in South Korea right now. Um, now this this is a, this looks pretty bad for Twitch. This looks pretty bad for Twitch, all right? It's a lot of negative. What the fuck, Twitch? Lots of but 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 but. but, but. Uh, I did find a post that kind of details a little bit of what's going on. I found another link that Netflix is dealing with that Netflix is working on uh, that I think you guys would probably find interesting as well. So this is while Twitch gets shit on. This is a country issue. Uh, South Korea is targeting content providers in general. The short version is that South Korea wants content providers such as YouTube, Netflix, Twitch to sign contracts with local ISPs with obligations to pay fees to use their networks. From YouTube's point of view, users and providers would be paying double to use their networks for the same devices. So... So I found this other article. Uh, it, it should automatically translate here. Uh, and this says that Netflix battle over network usage fee resumes at high court. So yeah, this is, I mean, Netflix is dealing with the same thing. They're trying, they're, they're coming in, they're saying, no, nah, we shouldn't We shouldn't have to pay all this money to use the network there, to use their local network. While the local ISPs are saying that they're having to spin up extra servers to support the bandwidth for people, for Netflix making all this fucking money off of our network for shows that were literally made here. Like Squid Game, for example. So <laughs> something, something net neutrality. You gotta pay, man. You gotta pay. Uh, yeah, Twitch is logic. The South Koreans always use VPNs nowadays. So, well, but yeah, I mean, it does bring up you know net neutrality. It's like this is this is a great example of where net neutrality is is necessary, right? Like, uh, if it costs if if it costs some kind of license fee to use another ISP's um network and servers and uh, bandwidth. Or, traffic, whatever, uh, then that creates an immediate wall block for smaller companies trying to get in and into the same industry. So now it's only going to be the, the main, you know, the main, uh, companies that got in early or that can afford to do that, uh, or other big companies that will like spin off other arms like Apple, for example, with Apple plus, right? Apple wasn't in the TV business up until a few years ago and now they are. And so that's, that's something that, you know, it's gated to, that could potentially be gated if net neutrality is not respected. Uh, and you have to pay licensing fees all over the place just to even, just to even send your content somewhere. And if it starts here, if it starts here, it could reach here, right? <laughs> Where like I would have to on Twitch or something. It's like I would have to take a, a a cut out of my 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 annual or monthly pay in order to fund whatever network congestion and stuff that I might cause with my stream. Like that's entirely possible. Enti and you know, not I wouldn't necessarily put it out of reach of Twitch to do that. Um, see, I can confirm that chat is way better here than YouTube chat. I follow somebody there, uh, and it's so heavily modeled that there are even streamers with have light to no mod on it at all. YouTube original mod is way too, uh, too strict. Uh, like you can't say kill or die before getting modded there. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Um, see, just like phone companies limiting bandwidth on towers for smaller providers. Exactly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I see, it's actually having. Uh, to serve the bandwidth their cutters pay for. Oh, these poor, those poor things. Yeah, and so that's 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 part of the argument that ISPs are having. They're saying we can't support Netflix and, and and Amazon Video and all these other streaming services because then they would have to pay or charge the uh, people downstream more, which is going to be the consumer. Uh, now, a Freaka TV, which is a little lesser known unless you watch StarCraft, uh, a Freaka TV is a long running, longer than Twitch, by the way, uh, streaming platform. That is, you know, that that uh, is based out of South Korea. They use a peer-to-peer -peer system uh, for their uh, for their video streaming, and they do 1080p. Uh, the only catch is whenever there's like a big stream or something, they have to break up the rooms or something because of the way the peer-to-peer -peer system works or something like that. Um, but but they use a peer-to-peer -peer system. Twitch actually tested a peer-to-peer -peer system, but they said that they don't quite know for sure if it's something they want to implement just yet. Like they're they're still testing it. It's still a possibility they could add a peer-to-peer -peer system, so that way they could have 1080p in South Korea. Uh, but they don't want to just jump on it right away. And even 
even uh, uh, Afrika TV's uh, peer-to-peer system has some, uh, or maybe it was Twitch that I actually was talking about from their end. They're worried about IP exposure uh, for any bandwidth over a certain amount to support like 1080p or something like that. So, so there's a lot of like, there's a lot of tech complications here that they're trying to overcome in order to bring that service to South Korea in 1080p. Uh, but damn, this sucks. <laughs> like for like esports and stuff, like that's huge, man. 720. Who wants to fucking watch a 720p esports tournament? Like, come on. Uh, I feel like most ISP advertise a higher bandwidth, knowing that most people will not saturate half of that. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> there are some Fediverse live streaming services. Ooh, what is this? Uh, so they don't get AWS friends and family rates either. You say <laughs> nope. Uh, oh, peer to peer live streaming sites. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so again, like that's something that Twitch, they know about. They don't, it's not like they don't know about it. They tested it. Um, but they said they're just not ready to, to deploy anything like that. Uh, you know, and it's funny cause again, it, it does seem like this is yet another example of them trying to like rush out features that'll either save them money or going to make them money. Uh, and you know, go, it goes back to Dan Clancy. Like, I don't know when Dan Clancy took over. That's just like when it was official. I don't feel like, was there like an announcement or anything like that? I can feel like he's the most uncelebrated CEO of one of the most celebrated platforms. Uh, so like even his existence, it's like, it's like when he said Dan Clancy posted a new message about the 7030 cut. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? They like just made him up just to put out the bad news or something. Talk says, uh, are there restrictions coming for watching streams from Korea or just the one way street? It's just a one way street thing right now. Um, I don't know anything about anything, any other restrictions, but that's pretty much it. You talk about how people race differs from us, uh, for us, uh, Luddites. Sure. So, uh, uh, so whenever you watch a stream on Twitch, you're watching it from basically Twitch's servers. Twitch is taking the signal that I'm sending to Twitch. I send a signal to Twitch. Twitch goes, sends it everywhere, right? With the peer to peer system, uh, it works just like old file sharing networks like LimeWire and Kazaa and all that, where you or any any torrent service right now. Sorry, it's, just, it's not like it disappeared. The tech is still here. Uh, but basically, you up, I would send the signal out and then it would basically fan out to other people who would fan it out to other people who would fan it out to other people. And then you would have this great like kind of saturated network of people sharing data with each other. Uh, and that's how they're able to support that system. So basically Afrika TV is not sending millions and millions and millions of fucking terabytes or whatever to all of these people. It's the, it's the viewers who are basically sending and kind of handing off that content uh, and those feeds to other, other people who are connected. So that's how the peer to peer thing works, a shared network. Right back. Thank you so much. And also happy belated birthday to you. Dan Clancy sounds like an off-brand Tom Clancy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every time I say it, I always say, I'm trying not to say Tom. <laughs> I'm trying to say Tom. Um, so yeah, we'll see if there's any like what that how that affects like streaming out of there. But I think that's I think it's going to be just a one-way street. Uh, and we'll know because I mean there's like a million esport players who stream from South Korea, so we'll definitely know for sure. Um, Trade-off on the peer-to-peer -peer is latency. Yeah, yeah, latency would be an issue with that. But I mean, it's it's. I mean, for 1080p, like, it's kind of like, it might be worth it. It might be worth it. Um, let's, let me take a drink for this one. Jeez. Mm. So. A message. No, wait. No, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let me see. Um, oh, did I have it? No, no, no. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, oh no, shit, no, I have to find, I have to find something real quick. Hold on. Now it's gone. Okay. Uh, it doesn't, oh boy. <laughs> All right. So, I uh, we've covered, we've covered Google Stadia a few times on, uh, on news. Everyone's talked about Google Stadia, uh, um, you know, basically being a, a platform that's probably not going to last because we've seen plenty of other services come and go on live guy, Kai. I mean, there's tons of services that even exist now. Uh, and it makes Stadia feel redundant. And so our, our assumptions on what might happen with Stadia were true. Uh, they are going to be canning the software, uh, canning the, the platform, uh, as of January 18th, 2023. So that's only in a few months, about like two and a half months, three months. Um, speaking of tech companies being great at communication. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Dang it. Go back and do it again. So uh, this is a whole lot of corporate speak from Phil Harrison, uh, just basically saying, yeah, you know, uh, we're not going to do this anymore. It's not really working out. So we're going to go ahead and can it. Um, but here's what you should know. It says you will continue to have access to your games library through January 18, 2023. By the way, does anybody here have uh, Google Stadia while I'm, while I'm reading this out? Um, 
at Google's biggest problem is once again Google. <laughs> I am my own worst enemy. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, January 18, 2023, so you can complete final play sessions and move your progress to alternate platforms where uh, possible. Uh, there there are there are plenty of ways to get your saved game files off of Stadia, so it's not like it's uh, gone forever. So that part is fine. Uh, commerce functionality. So basically, you cannot buy games anymore, DLCs, you can't make any transactions. They don't want to do any of that shit. Uh, but it does say that Google will offer a full refund of all Stadia hardware purchases, the controller, Founders Edition, Premier Edition, all that stuff, uh, uh, and any games and game transactions. So if you made a whole bunch of purchases on Google Stadia thinking that this thing was gonna be here forever, then lucky fucking you, you're getting your goddamn money back. And now you could spend it on something else. Maybe it'll come in the form of like an Android gift card or something like that. Um, wasn't it announced unofficially a while back that it was shutting down? I seem to recall hearing as a long time, just no set date. Mm, not, 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 not with so much uh, conviction. <laughs> Again, we all knew it was coming. So it could have been that. It's like, oh, we all knew it was coming. So we got the announcement. It's kind of like, oh, of course. So it says, uh, Google's Phil Harrison. There goes my free Christmas, Christmas money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Christmas money. Hell yeah. Bad for developers are working on a game. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too. Uh, also, the employees. Uh, they were notified minutes before, minutes before, uh, there's actually, uh, here we go. Hi everyone. We'll be having a Stadia team meeting today, September 29th at 8:30 uh, AM Pacific time, uh, sh to share some important updates with everybody. Apologies for the short notice. We would appreciate it. If you can please prioritize attending this meeting or check with your manager after afterwards, if you can't make it details will be added to your calendars. This will be a virtual only meeting. Da -da 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 -da. And that was from Phil. And that was at 915 was the was the uh, uh, when they made the public announcement. So 45 minute advance notice that they were going to be. Oh, sorry. 45 minute advance notice for the meeting. Uh, I'm sorry. 45 minutes prior. They announced we need to have a meeting because in 45 minutes, we're going to make an announcement that we're shutting down Stadia. <laughs> and so the employees didn't get any kind of heads up on this. Um, and we know this to be true. We know this to be true because they just updated. They just updated their UI fucking two days ago. Two days ago. So two days ago. And even the, where's wait? Where's the uh, here we go? Dan from Google. Glad everyone's liking the new UI. <laughs> it will slowly be rolling out to everyone. So if you don't see it yet, you should soon. <laughs> so yeah, nobody like the the left arms are talking to the right arm, or the brains are talking to the body. Whatever it is. Um, Anybody reading this email is no longer works for us. Yeah, exactly. If you're getting this email uh, late, then uh, you're fired. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there are reports of developers getting screwed. You guys have probably seen this tweet floating around uh, that shows that uh, Tangle Tower was due to launch on Stadia in two days time. And this article was the first I heard about it shutting down. Obviously, they're probably not going to communicate with everybody that they're shutting down, but they should. Like, there should be some kind of like, 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 <sighs> Some kind of wind down period. This one, I have. We have a title coming out November first. Now we hear about this. Uh, I found another one on Reddit actually in R slash Game Dev. Um, actually, no. One of you guys found it. Put it in uh, in chat. Appreciate it. This is uh, in Discord. This is a horrible night with Stadia. We worked four to five months to build a port for Stadia. Today we finished our port. It works wonderfully, but nobody will be able to play it. So yeah, it's just like I mean, it just person nobody's to blame. Stadia's crew is very helpful. Like I mean, it just just gotta feel fucking terrible. And, you know, even the way that this message is formatted makes it feel like this person is just fucking bummed, you know, like one sentence, enter one sentence, enter just sad, just fucking sad. He says, there, I try not to cry. Ugh, just fucking terrible. So like, while yes, it's great for consumers. We're getting all of our, we're getting our money back and everything. Uh, it's still, it's still, you know, it still sucks, man. That's how I type when I'm sad. Yeah, I, 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 it reads like that, doesn't it? It reads like that. Fuck, it is, it is sad. Um, especially when he talks about four to five months of just ironing out bugs and everything to, to make it work. It's just, it's just shit. Um, now there are, there's a lot of people, a lot of articles popping up now, which is great. Uh, this is the kind of pressure that we need. Uh, people are saying that, you know, we, we want to have, now that Stadia is being shut down, can Google open source the control firmware so that we don't have bricks? Um, you know, people just want, it's like, just, just open source the firmware or put out an update that turns it into just a normal Bluetooth controller. Uh, people have already had workarounds to make Stadia controllers work for, uh, for like PC. 
where they would have like you have to be wired in one example another one somebody actually got it wired to their phone and then use the phone as the proxy um to connect to stadia not really the best option right or not stadia but to connect to other uh other uh, uh game consoles um but yeah this is i mean this is kind of a big deal because you know if they don't update the firmware on this in order to turn it into just a regular controller then every single controller is basically trash and that's like a fuck ton of plastic that's going to be here until the next set of dinosaurs show up. So it's straight up fucking waste. <laughs> and, you know, it's like it sucks to have a controller you can't fucking use. You know, it's like, what the fuck is the point? And I hear people love that controller for some reason. Um, so lots of gamers are going to be like, yeah, we got our money back. Woo. But they don't care about the devs at all. Yeah. As if Google's a shit about that. I mean, that's the kind of, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's the kind of pressure that people need to put on now. It's like, okay, before you fucking do this, you should probably do something to make it so that we don't necessarily throw, that we don't have to throw all of this plastic away and just, now it just sits in a dump somewhere. Uh, like E.T., like the, all those copies of E.T. that they found on like a dump or whatever, buried. Like shit like that. It's going to be there forever. Forever. <laughs> so yeah, people are pushing really hard to try to get them to do this. Who knows if this is something they're going to move on. Um, you know, we go back, here we go. This is 2021. Uh, talk about like some of the, some of the things that, uh, um, that Stadia did, you know, they try to launch their own studio. They're trying to acquire studios. They end up shutting down their in-house studio. This was, this was last year, 2021, February. Uh, by the way, also a last minute's message from Phil Harrison. <laughs> You can recycle plastic. You can't. Not all plastic is recyclable, unfortunately. That's a that's a that's a lie. You know, I I know I know we all we all try to we just throw it all in there and hope it all could be recycled, but unfortunately, um, it's still a lot of waste that you can't you can't. Uh, uh, there's still a lot of waste other than the plastic, and we don't even know if the plastic itself is something they could repurpose. I hate it when they brick good hardware because of lack of firmware updates. Yep. Um. I mean, if they open source it, then, you know, somebody will take care of it. There's plenty of people out there that'll manage it. Might be a fucking Google employee that will, that'll actually manage it, which is actually what happens in a lot of cases. Um, see, Jason Schreier. Yeah, so Jason Schreier even comments about how Bloomberg, he had a Bloomberg article he put out last year, probably related to this one here, the shutting down. And he said, I reported this last year at Bloomberg, but the amount of money Google spent to get games on Stadia is so shocking that I still can hardly believe it. Even after corroborating with multiple sources, tens of millions of dollars per game. For Red Dead 2, Assassin's Creed, etc. And so this is not not for exclusivity. They weren't putting tens of millions of dollars out for exclusivity. They just wanted a port to their platform that you pay monthly to have access to and you pay full price to own the game. I'm sorry, to license the game on said platform. It's just the even the fucking business model is just fucking bad. Just not good. Uh, <laughs> you were sitting my old DJ controller when it didn't support anything out of the virtual DJ? <laughs> See, exactly. Most plastics aren't just one type of plastic. It's just incinerated like your uh, other trash regardless. Mm. So yeah, I mean, like, you know, Schreier talks here about how they're paying tens of millions of dollars per game just to get a port, just to get a port over to the platform. It just seemed like it was like one really, really bad decision after another. Um, uh, I mean, here's another one. This is another Phil Harrison uh, fucking gem right here. Uh, so this is per a source. It says uh, Stadia turned down an exclusive Death Stranding follow up from Kojima. So Hideo Kojima, creator of a million fucking great games. And then uh, Death Stranding, which is a massive game that's exclusive to PlayStation. Uh, it's worded as if it was going to be like a sequel. It's not what it was. It was just basically another game that Hideo Kojima, Kojima was going to make exclusive for Stadia and Phil was like, nah, man, we only do multiplayer around these parts. We don't want anything to do it. Nobody wants a single player game. Fucking bonehead ass. Bonehead ass. Uh, I found another quote from him in 2008 uh, where he said basically the same fucking thing, saying that nobody wants uh, a single player games. They want multiplayer games. And while at the time, I understand World of Warcraft was in full motherfucking swing. Everybody wanted to be that. And he was working for uh 2008. What was he working for? Uh I can't remember who. But but still, he still has that mindset like that single player games can't exist. Come on, man. Not everybody is social, right? There's a fucking market for this. There's so many fucking single player games that are fucking huge. So he turns down one of the biggest fucking creators of, of game creators because it's no multiplayer. And now, now I, I, what I've read is that Hideo Kojima is making games for 
uh, uh, making this, I guess, took this game to go to Microsoft now or something. <sighs> Can you imagine if they didn't and took that game down with them? Ooh. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's like, so maybe it was the right decision because he knew that the writing was on the wall, but uh, I don't know. I don't think so. How does this man still have a job in the games and tech industry? Because, man, people just fail up. They just, they just fail up. I actually have, uh, <laughs> I, I pulled this up and I was going through his, uh, I was going through his uh, setup. Oh, that's right. He was working for Atari when he said that, uh, that, that, uh, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Uh, later that year, he gave interviews in which he predicted that single player games were to become increasingly rare as consumers wanted network connectivity and community. Yeah. And then he left the company like two years later. So yeah, here here's his Google stretch uh, on January twenty. That's, well, actually, let's go to the top here. So uh, uh, Atari, we all know what happened. Atari, basically trash brand now. Uh, cool shirts though. Guy Kai bought out by uh, bought out by uh, um, Sony, um, and then Microsoft. I mean, he was what. what, what he, he was there for Xbox One launch, which is pretty rough. The Xbox One launch is pretty rough. I mean, like, he just hasn't had any wins, you know? So he's he joined Google as vice president and general manager. And then, uh, and then see, he was, uh, Harrison was a product manager. Uh, it was shut down. And then they shut down their shit. That's the next step. <laughs> 2018, welcome aboard. 2021, we're shutting it down. Yeah. I had to be connected as part of why I rarely play games anymore. And that's what, that's something that, again, I feel like that's, I get that mindset because I was there too. It was like, yeah, everybody's got a multiplayer f facet to their game because that's what people are going for right now. Because that was 2008, 2012. It was peak online gaming, peak, peak multiplayer social online gaming. Uh, uh, while it's still massive now, it was like, a, it was a different kind of, it's hard to explain. It was like, it was still kind of new. Right, it was still kind of new and fresh, and everybody wanted a piece of that pie. They still exist in a million different forms now, uh, but that was the mindset. We have to make multiplayer in every game. We can't have. We've heard CEOs say that before. We're not making games that aren't multiplayer. I fucking think a Blizzard had that same mantra for a while. Um, I peaked MMO with WoW. Actually, they of course they did because every game has a multiplayer facet to it. Uh, I peaked MMO with WoW for twelve years, and now I just want my single player turn based games. I man, same, same. I love my, I love my, I can just play this by myself. There's no pressure. I don't have to like, I'm just playing this game. I'm strategizing shit for me or me, right? Single player. Um, you play MMOs by yourself. Yeah. You can play. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing. I play most of the time when I played MMOs, I was playing by myself. I, even though you guys saw it differently, you know, you guys saw, um, uh, me like streaming it with like our RGBs and all that stuff uh, because we were the best. We were the best RGB team in, uh, in all of World of Warcraft. <laughs> that was a real cough. I wasn't trying to say anything there. Um, so yeah, welcome to welcome to the graveyard. You can see that Google Stadia already has it's uh, right here in the middle. Okay, now it's off to the side. It says done in four done for in four months. Google Stadia was a cloud gaming service com combining a Wi-Fi gaming controller and allowed users to stream gameplay through web browsers. T Mobile TV. Blah, 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 blah. It'll be about it'll be about three years old. If you haven't seen this site, BT Dubs, uh, it is a killed by Google. You can search something. Let's search. Let's search the uh, Hangouts. Right? Is Hangouts dead? Yeah. So Google Hangouts getting unplugged in two months. Oh. Oh, I didn't know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I thought I was already gone. <laughs> there's so far. Look, there's 274 uh, total. There's hardware. There's services. I love that it's like it's like separated. You know, it's like let's see what an app. So what can I see? YouTube Go, Google My Business, Cormo Jobs, Google My Maps, Backup and Sync. Let me see. Fitbit Coach. Oh God, that's right. Did they they absorbed? Uh, they ab oh Tilt Brush. Oh man. So, I mean, that was an older game, but still. I mean, not game, but still, that was like it. There was like infinite possibilities of Tilt Brush. I mean, it was still not a big deal, but. Um, AdSense mobile app. I mean, yeah. I mean, YouTube for Nintendo 3DS. Hey, some of these make sense. Some of these make sense for sure. Like, I mean, YouTube for 3DS. Come on. Yeah, you can still play it. You can still play it. It's not updated anymore, so it's not going to support like new features and all that shit. Um, but uh, yeah, services. Probably we're going to see the core of things that you guys will. Uh, yeah, YouTube Originals. I remember that going away. Um, Google Hangouts, Google Chrome apps, G Suite. I've used a lot of these things. Uh, kill the whole VR section. Yep. Hangouts got forced into uh, a Gmail browser tab. I hate it for work. Yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah, it's, it's off to the side of my Gmail now. Uh, Hangouts on another platform where Google was the enemy Enemy meet. They're absorbing all the Fitbit data soon, requiring a Google account. 
Oh, really? Is that is that one of the they made with uh, with Fitbit? Oh man, <laughs> I'm so glad I don't have a Fitbit. Meanwhile, my Apple Watch giving all my information to Tim Apple. Fuck. <laughs> Tim Apple's all like, "I see you're walking. Do you want me to record this for you?" <laughs> sure, Tim. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> you intend to move away from Gmail at some point? <laughs> How? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was reading. I was watching. I was. Uh, I was uh, reading this article. It was like an article video. Uh, but I was reading this article. Um, this guy's. Like, he. I guess he. He was an Android user for years or whatever, and he used iPhone 14 for for like three weeks, and this was his like review of it or whatever. And I was reading the comments underneath, and you know, most nobody's really like no one's really moved by this. Like no one's gonna see somebody like no Android person is gonna watch somebody else who's a known Android person use an iPhone and be like, oh yeah, I should switch to iPhone. Like nah, people are pretty much settled where they're at. You know, it's like politics. No one's no one's gonna move to the other side. Um, but, you know, what was interesting was people who were describing their iOS experience were complaining about the first party apps, right? Like calendar sucks, mail, all that stuff sucks. And, you know, I was like, I never use those apps. You know why? Because I use all the Google apps on my iOS device. <laughs> so, like, I, I, I'm starting to understand a bit better the, the, the Android mindset you know, where you, cause for me, I use Android too, but for me, it's just kind of like, I access the same stuff on both platforms. You know, it's not really like, if you're like an Android person and you have first party apps, right? First party apps on your, on your phone that are far and away better than other apps that you would download. Whereas on iOS, you have to download these apps in order to get the best service with the uh, Google school products and everything. Yeah. It's funny. Cause to me, I was just kind of like, oh shit, I use all Google products on my, on my iOS device. So I understand what they're saying. I try to use mail and it sucks. Like, well, you could, I could have I told you that. <laughs> Any iOS person could tell you that. Like, yeah, fuck, it sucks. Calendar sucks. Got to move all my accounts over to Proton. Oh. Been moving for Gmail for a few years by now using Proton instead. Yeah, I heard Proton. That's the, like, like a self-hosting mail service or something. I can't remember. I don't know how it works. But uh, I see people use it a lot, though. Um, mostly, like, sex workers actually use it, which... I mean, you know, if they're using it, it must be kind of secure. Um, so, so yeah, Google killed it. Dead, rip, just encrypted. Oh, just encrypted. Sorry. So, uh, 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 um, mail VPNs that are going to Moving on. World Warcraft. That's some World Warcraft news. Wrath of the Lich King uh, was released this week. Um, and... A lot of people are very happy to be experiencing that again for the first second time. For the second first time, um, we already have a uh, a level eighty. Somebody already hit level eighty. Uh, this was uh, no now, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So so another W, I guess. First world eighty. He did it in a little under nine hours. Experience it again for the first time. Yeah, a little bit under nine hours to eighty. Um, I went a little, I was curious because I was like, I was like, uh, he's 12 years late. Yeah, that was my, that was my tweet. I was like, oh, he's like 12, 12 hours, 12 days, 12 years and nine hours late. Am I right? Um, but I went and looked at what the original was. Just curious. And so I found the original, the original on Gadget and fucking article on this 2008, November 14th, 2008. Uh, it says the world first was, uh, uh, was Niveau, uh, Nim, uh, who actually went on to make like a bunch of like cool, like, I don't know if you guys remember, like machinima, like music videos and stuff like that. Like he made a lot of really cool videos for a while. Um, and then he had a kid and uh, I couldn't make content anymore. So I was kind of the end all. Um, but yeah, he did it in 27 hours. So yeah, 20. Yeah. You remember seeing ah, you guys remember. <laughs> so yeah, he did it. Uh, he did it in 27 hours. Uh, I was reading the comments though. Cause I was curious. It's like, okay, well, what's, what's the difference between what they did? Turns out they did the same thing. Uh, thanks to this person here. I'll go ahead and thank you. It says he used the OG wrath spot. There's an elite mob that nonstop summons zombies. And if you tag them all before he summons new ones, uh, when he does, they despawn and you get full XP for the ones that despawned. Also using four dead level ones at his party makes it so he gets full at group XP. So, uh, so this is, this is basically the same technique strategy that was used in the original, uh, 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 now Robin, the person who, uh, hit, uh, in under nine hours, says that um 
uh, or, or on this stream or not not on a stream i guess he was playing an old vod or something like that which is hilarious uh but he went from 71 to 80 doing it that way so it wasn't like he got to the last like 79 or something and then like when did it you basically did it for the, basically the entire time you surprised they didn't pick that exploit for the re-release are you surprised though are, are we really are we surprised are we surprised <laughs> <laughs> is this really surprising <laughs> no <laughs> is, is keeping this same uh exploits of 12 years later a bug or a feature yeah it's it's weird that they would leave it in but i mean I, again like i guess i'm just not surprised shit minute effort on blues apart of course it's not a first if this has been done already nah man it's different this is different this is the second first and other blizzard news this is uh just an update because i don't know if you guys know this but the new overwatch game is coming out in like four days five days Do you guys know about this they haven't really talked about it too much <laughs> it's just a just a you know just one it's just an update <laughs> oh so <laughs> I saw a guy sort of bought for his piece of Pringles and asked him 80 yet, just grinned and walked out. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, the expansion of Overwatch. Overwatch servers shut down in two days. Yeah, actually, they've they've already gone through and they've forced loot boxes open. I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, uh, XQC had yeah. well, had like 1,200, 1,300 boxes, and he goes to log in to do his to do to open. I guess he was gonna open boxes or something like that, right? Boxes are, are disappearing. Oh, here you go. Is he, my boxer! is he playing? Why the fuck is he playing Eminem? <laughs> why the fuck is he playing Eminem in the background? <laughs> the fuck? Rules for thee. Uh huh. Anyway, so uh, he lost his. Uh, it didn't lose. They forced open his twelve hundred and fifty six uh, box. I actually wonder if that's like the maximum number you could have because I feel like you could have more. Um. You should check and see if you have anything. I'm sure any, I mean, those, if you've played any Overwatch, this possibly you probably have some loot boxes sitting in there for they just throw shit in there for you, you know? They're just like, oh, there's, a, there's an event that happened. You happen to log in at the right time or whatever. Um, it's not. Oh, you had 2,000? Shee! Well, log in and get all your stuff, man. Log in and get all your shit. So, so going back to the article, though, this one here from Polygon, it says that uh, Overwatch 2 will require brand new players to unlock most of the roster through play. Says Blizzard says Overwatch newcomers will need to play about 100 matches to unlock every classic here. Now listen, this is worded a bit weird, okay? Uh, Overwatch 2 will require brand new players. What they really mean is that Overwatch period, because Overwatch 1 is actually going to disappear. If you have Overwatch 1, guess what? It's going to become Overwatch 2 in about three or four days. And so that's going to replace this. Uh, so if you're new to the Overwatch IP, then you would have to go through and 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 play to unlock all this stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll, now I'll, all your shit will will transfer over apparently. Um, so random players will need to get fucked and suffer unless they <laughs> front load the meta champs. Uh, yes, and it's free. Yes, yeah, also mentioned. Yes, yeah, Overwatch Two is free. So that's and this is something that. Uh, I understand it i understand that it, it's causing a lot of confusion because there's not a ton of advertising i mean blizzard goes to the same school of communication that twitch does uh so there's not a lot of communication as to like how this is going to work i've i've learned most of the stuff that i've learned from like twitter replies <laughs> uh season pass costs money yeah so there are there are costs with like season passes and all that stuff uh you get like 80 skins or something like uh, yeah there's some complaints about a skin being reused or something which are uh, yeah, animation being reused which is actually not even entirely true uh so i mean like I i'm trying to basically quell some of the outrage against this because a lot of people are really upset because you know the the um because the game is is going to be replacing the old game which is understandable but that's kind of the blizzard way i mean look what happened to warcraft 3 they're just like oh old warcraft 3 nope um so i could play for free uh if i never play overwatch one yeah yeah watch this free play game that is replacing my paid copy of overwatch one yes but you get to keep everything you unlocked in overwatch one by paying for it uh, so it sounds like you replaced Warcraft 3 with the remake. Yeah, money, popcorn. Mm -hmm. Overwatch Classic when? <laughs> Am I going to play? Oh, man, I don't know. 
I haven't played I haven't played Overwatch in forever, and you know, I'm not really you know fan of Blizzard, but you know maybe you know maybe we'll see. Well, actually, you know, next week we're next week we're gonna be playing a lot of uh, um, uh, 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 demos because it's the uh, Steam Next Fest happening. But you know, I mean, we might come back and play another time. I mean, game's not going anywhere, and it's fucking free. Uh, I didn't have a problem. The gameplay's fun. I really like the gameplay. I just suck. I just suck. That's why I don't play. <laughs> <laughs> You might have some loot boxes. I might. I might have some loot boxes. It's true. Save yourself. It's at the effort. It's trash on too. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I've read. So there's a review here. I know the IGN is not like the bastion for like you know reviews or anything like that that we should trust. But um, their review seems pretty. You know, they're saying like, yeah, you know, it's good. It's good. It's got enough content. You call it a two, like a sequel, not necessarily one point five. But you know, um, you can take it with a grain of salt. Uh, it's an it's an evolving review in progress. Let's see. I was willing. What was this? I was willing to uh, give a watch to a try and looked past the battle pass op opinions. Uh, I cannot play however uh, because I do not own a cell phone. The decision to play was made for me. Yes. So that's another thing. Wait, are you joking? <laughs> because of the cell phone thing. Do you have a phone? <laughs> because uh, I did read that. You have to put in a phone number in order to play or make an account. So you have to have a phone number or something like that. I guess it's some way to keep people keep bots or something. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I'm sure. Um, oh, what did you, what did you do? I can't even see the message. Rip, mysterious. Um, getting screwed over myself to uh, Blizzard support. Uh, getting screwed over myself due to Blizzard support, and I'm going to be avoiding unless people really want to pay for it. Yet. Uh, not joking. I don't own one. Okay, okay. Well, you know, because every time Blizzard comes up and do you have phones thing, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the main reason why people were hyped for Overwatch 2 is because of single player stuff and not the multiplayer updates and we're not even getting any info on that yeah there's still a lot of questions to be that, to be answered uh, regarding that um, so next week you'll probably play a bunch of uh, Lindaire games too that's right that uh, started a few hours ago without link oh rip <laughs> People are having to put in for refunds because of the phone requirement. Ooh, okay, yeah, that part sucks when you go to register and you have to put in for a refund because of that. Ah, uh, I, I read a comment somewhere and I was just like, "There's no way that that's true." Like you have to use a phone number because someone was like, "Oh, it's so free, it's free. You can just go get a SIM card." It's like, dude, that's so much work to play a fucking game. You know that you might play like once or twice. Um, jeez. There, uh, don't you guys have phones? I know exactly. Uh, this other, this other, hold on, I got this other article here. This one actually came in from Kite. Um, uh, this is a good one. So we talked about no, no, Geo alerts turned off, but I love you still. Um, so we, we, we covered this when it popped up before that Blizzard had made a tool that, uh, that was supposed to help them determine if a character is diverse enough right for their roster right for overwatch um and they put this out and I'm, I'm pretty sure we shit on it like we probably shat shat all over it because it was like just just fucking make make characters right make them diverse sure but you don't have to like don't take gender diversity and make it binary for fuck's sake like do something with it you know like <laughs> so yeah that thing yeah that's right that's right that, that was a, that was a fun meme exactly well somebody somebody some sleuth uh, ended up piecing together. So previously on info diversity came from Blizzard plus press release, which you just watched, and then um, and then an old GDC tech uh, talk, and then he found this paper on the diversity bot. Uh, it's a PDF file, and it shows a couple of highlights here, a couple of examples, and everything talking about the tool that they built. They're very proud of this tool that they built, right? Um, <laughs> and then if you zoom in, if you just let me see, if you look here. We have now the shape of all of the characters and how they would basically fit into, I guess, this system, right? Every shape is here. And so what this person did was looking at this data here, overlaid it on top of the, the actual chart uh, and was able to determine everybody's breakdown of how diverse they are, like what their diversity score is. <laughs> and he put in a spreadsheet and everything but some highlights some highlights here uh it says um da, 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 we'll go to the bottom here it says uh this 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 is probably the top discovery here it says soldier 76 is not listed as gay on this chart but is on presumably on the presum but is on the presumably later charts it's almost as if his orientation changed solely as some form of pr smokescreen for other blizzard issues so if you remember when 
it was announced that Soldier 76 was uh, LGBTQ was like beginning of 2021 or something like that. There was an issue with a, I mean, people are trying to attach it to this, but I don't really see the connection, but we know that they had tons of issues popping up all over the place. Um, and uh, there was the Ellie thing where it was like, there was an Overwatch competition and uh, I think it was all remote or something. And there was somebody that was smurfing on another account named Ellie. It was like all, I think it was like all women's or something. Or basically it was somebody pretending to be a woman participating in uh, uh, just all this fucking shit, all this like stupid controversy. Um, and I don't see that how this is related to that. Uh, oh my God. Somebody's texting me a million times. Fuck. Um, <laughs> So uh, here's another one. According to Blizzard, being non-binary is approximately as diverse as being a woman in newer tools. It could be overlooked entirely as it could be defaulted and counted as gender diversity score of zero, like men, not counting towards diversity at all. So let's go through. Let's go through and see how many points you guys could play along to. So let's see. Blizzard Activision's ethnicity tier list as a 2019 patch. So S tier. Uh, let's see. So it's uh, uh, Orisa and Zenyatta's ethnicities, Nigerian black. So if Nigerian or so black and uh, Indian uh, or Omnic, you get seven points. Korean, Japanese, uh, Chinese, Arab, you get uh, six points. Three points for Caucasian European, Caucasian Australian, uh, Caucasian Russian, Mexican. And then we have Caucasian American, zero points, which is F. <laughs> you have Robot Tank, Caucasian British, and Hispanic American Reaper. So I was like, damn, okay, I got zero points. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to be able to relate to a hero. Diversity in general is pretty important. Yes, yes. And I want to make sure I stress that. That's like, super, I want to make sure we're clear. Diversity is important, yes. Whenever I see it, like, put into a data set, it makes me feel like it's not genuine. It's not genuine diversity because now they're like, well, let's just make a system where we could plug in a bunch of things and we could, it'll just generate a diverse character character for us right it just feels very disingenuous to do it this way um but seeing all the points laid out really kind of gives an interesting insight into like how how we are uh rated by people at blizzard uh so for example we have japanese chinese swedish nigerian australian indian french russian german uh and nepali uh it's s tier for nationality and korean is is second for some reason uh, <laughs> uh and then for uh let's see mexican brazilian etc etc and then so i get three points here so i get three points here for being in this category i feel like i barely passed but no no that's nationality isn't it never mind nationality fuck american okay so i have zero points so i have zero points uh so you have three points for non-binary uh women and presumably everything else uh or or if you're a man zero points if you're a man uh <laughs> Uh, their sexual orientation tier list, uh, seven points if you are not heterosexual, and then zero points if you are heterosexual. <laughs> so, I think I'm still at zero points. <laughs> uh, your disability, uh, if you have a robot arm and one eye, uh, you get eight points. Hey, all right. If you have no disability, you get zero. If you have a mental, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, 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 yeah, not physical, but a mental disability, whatever it is, does not count. It's not, it's not really counted in here, I don't think. So I'm still at zero points. Uh, body type, uh, this is where I feel like I should get some points. Because if you're a robot centaur or a gorilla, you get 10 points. I don't feel like I have enough chest hair for this, so I can't really pull this off. But if you're stout chunky, uh, you could probably pass. Now, I feel like I'm somewhere between stout chunky and slim and curvy, right? But I'm not in the muscular Right? Yes. Uh, so I feel like I should get like three points. I should, I should get like pity points. Yeah, 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 yeah. The pity points. Harambe. <laughs> Junkrat is body type is right here uh, at six points. <laughs> it's going 13 points. Dang, I got like three. And I had to like beg for the three. Uh, oh, I get points here too, by the way, because uh, if you're old, you get 10 points. If you're a teen, you get six points. The average adult 20s or 30s, or if you're a robot tank or a centaur, you get zero points. But if you're young 20s or older adult, what's up? I got four more points right there. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I got seven points. Well, I don't know if it really counts for the three, but still. So, yeah, it is, it's it is to me, it does feel disingenuous to do it this way, but I'm glad that somebody surfaced this, surfaced this data because it gives us good insight into, like, how, how uh, Blizzard is actually uh, uh, categorizing um, and... <laughs> creating these characters um to make them you know make them diverse enough 
but a different kind of i don't know fucking know, a different kind of diverse not from these other ones although like yeah i guess there's no there's no mention for like uh autism is not on it there's no there's no like no like mental disability on here whatsoever that counts as anything uh which should count for something <laughs> uh let's see racking them up at 24 points dang <laughs> oh there's a chart telling me i'm not diverse or relevant feels good man yeah man if you white and heterosexual guess what zero imagine autism does it do we know if any of the characters are let me see uh oh it's it is assumed yeah so it is assumed, so it says here maybe autism wasn't even consideration and these are just physical disabilities which are all that matters to blizzard so yeah there's not enough data to support it yet yeah it says symmetra but the, but the thing is it's like robot arm plus autism symmetra so so even in, the, in their data, I guess what we'd probably need to see is another character introduced that has autism or something. Uh, and that would probably help like um, uh, to balance this out and make more sense with the data. But I mean, you know, we also don't know if this is going to change, especially now that everybody knows about it. Well, not about everybody, but you guys know. And I know. And that's enough. That's enough. We're a very big population here. Um, uh, even when they make diversity chart, they fail diversity. I'm so, gener I'm so generic white dude that I'm basically an NPC. <laughs> for social points and bigger cells yes exactly and that's the disingenuous part right there that's it right there um yeah yeah you're right no you're right you're right it's true she she is it is it has been stated that uh that uh she does have autism symmetra does um uh but i'm not following it necessarily but yeah i forgot that they did mention something like that uh go got to justify wearing that pin every blizzcon <laughs> Uh, so, so that's, uh, 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 shit. Is that a fucking rap? Is that a rap on our news? What the hell? See, I liked, uh, I liked the time, uh, when characters were just body types and suits and focus was on the game just being good. Well, you know, I, okay. So it, it, it diversity needs to be in games because people are diverse, right? Um, and so the game needs to represent the people that are playing, uh, it's when, but when they do it like this, then it's just like, well, now you're just a number. Like, you're diverse, sure, because you're neurodivergent or because you're LGBTQ or whatever. But to them, it's just a number. It's like, they're like, oh, pride flags and all that stuff every fucking season, but they don't really care. It's just a numbers thing, right? I mean, it's a business, you know? We know that's the way they act. This is what they do, right? So we're not surprised by that, but it doesn't mean it just feels any less, you know, genuine or disingenuous or whatever. Um, you don't think it's a bad thing to support it by data? Hmm. I mean, like, I mean, I get it. They were just like white people, white straight dudes or zero. It's like, that's fine. I guess, you know, I got some points for my age. <laughs> the videos of, uh, uh, yeah. The videos of black girls saying black girl prove that diversity is needed. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. That was a whole weird thing too, by the way. Like none of these dudes are complaining about being black Ariel are gonna watch like we're planning on watching a live action Little Mermaid. <laughs> a representation is a point, but point system just seems cynical. It does. And you know, maybe maybe what it is is because it's Blizzard. You know, like if it was a small company who's trying to create a way to be diverse or something or crumble the system, they'd probably get shit on too. But <laughs> But still, <laughs> but still, uh, <clears throat> I say, uh, I think there's a difference between say a black character and a character that happens to be black. Like is their whole character, the fact that they're not straight white male or is more to them. Um, I'm not trying to answer that yet. Kind of rings hollow still. Yes, it does. It does. It does. Um, so, 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 I mean, I would have watched it, but I have differing opinions. Um, speaking of watching something. I uh, so uh, uh, I, I want to show you guys. I'm kind of a proud dad moment here, but I'm going to show you guys a video that uh, that Declan made. Uh, I helped him make it by editing it, but he made the animation and everything. It's totally goofy. It makes no sense. There's no there's no story or anything like that. But I wanted to show it to you because I'm very proud of this boy. Um, so this is a video. It's called Kirby's it's called Kirby and the Quick Draw. Uh, he posted it up on YouTube. He says he's a YouTuber now and all that stuff. He's very excited. Um, <clears throat> and what it is, it's a mini game that existed in other games uh, in other Kirby games where they have a quick draw. Um, you know, I mean, we've seen plenty of games that have that where it's like you be the fast, right? Uh, don't don't go before you know, don't get a penalty or whatever. Anyways, I mean, it's it's a minute thirty five seconds. It's very short, but I still want to play. Curry Quick Draw was an amazing mini game. Yep, here we go. Oops, sorry. <laughs> 
Kirby, 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 Kirby. You know all the voices. He made the whole thing in scratch. He made the whole thing in scratch. Uh, scratch.edu. And he made he he pieced together the sprites. He made some of the sprites himself because some of the sprites don't exist for some of these characters. Um and uh uh and he pieced it together. Oh here we go. Uh, it's a boss fight. Ding fire! Uh, but it was a great, it was a great, like, uh, a co-op kind of, like, creation thing that we did. Oh, here we go. We got Susie showing up. We got fucking Dark Matter or something showing up. So cute. That's him, too. He figured out how to, how to pitch his voice down by slowing down the, the music, or slowing down the audio. So I cut a bunch out. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a one minute, like, speech. Uh, uh, anyways, Kirby so wins. Kirby wins. The loser. Loser. <laughs> so <laughs> super adorable. Yeah, I know. So proud. We we sat there together. We went over the whole thing. Um, like he made the animation and everything, and so I took it. And, like I cut. I did the zooms and all that. And, like the edits, kind of, kind of. Concise, make it a little more concise. It was like three minutes long total before. Um, but uh, yeah, it's his first little animation he put together. And so I'm sure he's going to want to do more. And he, uh, I told him, I was like, I'll help you edit these. No problem. You make the animations and do the audio and all that stuff. And I'll just, I'll put it together and, you know, slap some, some pizzazz on it. And we'll go from there. So yeah, I'm very proud of this kid. He's been working with sprites and everything for fucking years now. And now he's finally getting into animating things. Uh, yeah, I can throw this to you guys. It's his It's his channel, but it's managed by me. So um, there you go. <clears throat> That's it. Like, favorite, subscribe. <laughs> Six videos a dad day. Come on. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried that, yeah, he might take that as, oh, we can make a ton of games. A ton of videos now. Uh, he's a YouTuber with an editor. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good for good for him. Good for him. Um, anyways, yeah. So proud dad moment. Had to share that with you guys. I'm glad you guys uh, stuck out for that. So <laughs> that's it for the news. That's it. Reminder: We're gonna be doing this. We're gonna try to do this every Friday. The holidays are coming up, so it may not happen, right? Maybe, but for but in general, we're aiming to do this every Friday. Okay. All right. Also, also we have um. Uh, the uh, the Hot Ones episode coming out. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's exactly why we're, I'm taking Thursdays off so I can edit this shit together so that people on YouTube can watch. So look out for that. That whole episode's cut down. It's it's sexy. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> it's us eating hot shit. And then, of course, there's the fucking onion. And I won't say anything other than that. Uh, what do we get when you skip a week? Oh, man, you get a, you get a credit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you chat my lovely chat for hanging out you guys can hang out for a minute we'll come right back we'll bullshit a little bit and we'll grab myself a drink have we really been fucking recording for an hour and 27 minutes holy shit how are these episodes so long there wasn't that much news the fuck thank you thank you for watching i'm gonna see you guys later twitch hangout fucking long ass episode <laughs>